disclaimer. Chapter 6 The fresh air seemed to help Louis focus a little bit more, just as it had earlier. Rand quietly asked him if everything was okay, but Louis didn't know how to reply. Everything that had happened when he had got into the toilet seemed like a dream. Parts of his memory missing while other parts seemed to be clouded over and hard to distinguish. He leaned back into the ghost guard seat with a huff and shook his head. I'm so sorry, he said softly. I've completely ruined today. How are you to know what will happen and this isn't your fault? were a few of the responses he got. But he was listening. It was his fault. It was his fault. The car rolled up beside 602 Applewood and came to stop. The driver asked if they would require anything else for tonight, but one of the men simply replied that they would be okay before thanking him. It was around 8 o'clock when the Grove got back into the cabin and the sun was settling just over the horizon, casting a range of pinks and oranges into the darkening sky. The grout was covered in long shadows that shivered in the evening breeze. The group were still trying to convince Louis that he wasn't to blame, but it was to no avail. Eventually, they tried to convince their younger friend to have an early night. Their arguments went on for 20 minutes before he finally gave in. So he muttered goodnight to his friends, feeling terrible about how bad the day had turned out, and walked up the stairs solemnly. His friends watched him go and looked at each other, unsure what to do or say. No one wanted to outright say it, but they were going to have a terrible holiday if Louis was sick. It was a roller coaster theme park. The only attractions you could go on were practically designed to make you motion sick. If Louis didn't feel well, this place wasn't going to help him. With nothing better to do, everyone else decided to go to bed early as well. The final lights went off at around 9 o'clock. Will laid on his bed thinking about everything that had happened. Their younger friend was car sick and yet not motion sick on roller coasters. He needed to eat and yet he couldn't hold down food. He was tired and yet refused to sleep but had fallen asleep in hot tub and nearly drowned. The musician began to contemplate whether it was a good idea to take Louis to a doctor's or hospital to get checked out. Would Louis actually go to the hospital though? At the end of the day, Bess was the only one with a car. Unless they went in ambulance. What the fuck, Will? Don't think that! It was a long time before he actually got to sleep. Whereas Will was trying to remember, Bess was trying to forget. He knew that Louis was just upstairs in his room, perfectly fine. Well, sort of fine. But every time he closed his eyes, he would see him under the water. White as a ghost, eyes closed, arms swaying limply in the current of the jets. It was a long time before he actually got to sleep. Reese couldn't help but wonder if his youngest friend passing out in the hot tub was linked to him being sick. Was he not telling them something? Was there something badly wrong? No, it had to be just one of those days. Coincidences don't make evidence, Reese. It was just a coincidence. It was a long time before he actually got to sleep. Ryan could hear Louis snoring next door. Their room were only separated by a thin wall. He listened for a while, not really wanting to sleep. He still felt guilty for being cautious around his friend. That whole thing with his wrist? Luis was tired and hungry. He probably wasn't completely aware of what he was doing. Does he need a doctor though? The simplest explanation was motion sickness, but if it was that, how would Luis have been okay on the ride but not in the car? Maybe he's a bit claustrophobic like me? The tight space made him feel sick? That made more sense. But then, why be sick in the restaurant? He ate too fast on an empty stomach. His body couldn't handle it. But he had barely eaten anything. 
It took a very long time, but Ryan eventually came up with what he thought was a solid theory. Lois was getting himself sick from the stress of upcoming events and was a little bit claustrophobic. That was what was making him feel sick. It wasn't travel or motion sickness. And that's why he switched to the front seat and could see more around him as he had more windows, he fell asleep. But car isn't a good place for that, with all of the bumps and jolts you get, and everyone else would sometimes have a loud conversation or Buzz would chill at them to stop talking over the sad nav. So he didn't get a good rest. That's why, after all of the excitement of the roller coasters, he fell asleep in the hot tub. Because he was asleep, he accidentally slid further into the water and that's why he almost drowned. Once, when Ryan was learning to swim, he accidentally fell into the pool when no one was watching and he himself had almost drowned. He definitely didn't feel like eating afterwards. That was why Luis was sick in the restaurant. He hadn't fully recovered from that whole incident yet. Being sick on a full stomach leaves you feeling pretty drained as you had just lost all of the substance inside you. So being sick when there wasn't really anything to throw up except bile would leave you with little energy. Which is why Luis had seemed so drancy and why he was so unresponsive afterwards. Ryan nodded to himself. That made sense. That answers a lot if not all of the whys. He grabbed his phone and looked at the time. It was 10.33. He had spent two hours and a bit on terrorizing. Damn. He smiled to himself, happy that he had worked it out and placed his phone back on the table and rolled over. He gave one last listen to Louis snoring in the next room before finally closing his eyes. He went into a peaceful and dreamless sleep. A thud from downstairs woke him up. His eyelids dragged open and he groaned as he rolled onto his back, hearing his spine click and grunt after being in a bad position for a while. He listened for the sound again, but heard nothing, nothing at all. Something was... missing. He couldn't work out what. It's probably just Bass or Reese in the downstairs bathroom, he talked to himself as he shuffled around to get into a better position. On second talk, what was the time? 6.42. Well, there really wasn't a point in going to sleep again if you had to wake up in just over an hour. He swung his leg over the side of the bed, running his fingers through his long fringe to get it out of his eyes. Then he stood up and went to his wardrobe, looking for something to wear. Eventually, he settled on a blue shirt, black socks and black t-shirt with white symbols on the front that he didn't actually know the meaning of. He crept out of his room and into the upstairs bathroom to brush his hair and teeth and do what you would normally do in a bathroom. He quickly went back to his room to grab his phone and then went downstairs. His first thought was, why can I smell coffee? Luis, that was why. He was sitting on a sofa, completely oblivious to Ryan's presence. The first thing that his older friend noticed was the mug he held tightly in his hands, and that he saw two other mugs on the coffee table. Were they from yesterday? No, Ryan would have cleaned them up. He couldn't stand the messy places. Morning, Ryan said, not knowing what else to do. Luis had shut around and stared at him. His eyes were filled with fear. They were bloodshot from tiredness, with light rings underneath them. His word was scruffy, and it was reasonable to presume that it hadn't been changed since he woke up. He was still in his bed shorts, but there was a dressing gown beside him. Louis stood up, almost falling back over again, and shuffled backwards. Hey, um, Reese. Oh, Ryan. I mean, I mean Ryan. His usual cheerful British accent was sluggish. Ryan raised an eyebrow. Are you okay? Would you like a coffee? Um, I'll make you a coffee. Okay? Yes! What is this conversation? Ryan took a step forward. Louis took a step back. 
He kept stepping backwards, not taking his eyes off of his older friend, until he got to a gap between the sofa and side table. Once there, he sidestepped over it and went to the kitchen area. Ryan watched him go, extremely confused. He moved over to the coffee table to look closer at the max. The coffee dregs were still at the bottom of each one. He felt the side of each cup. They were both warm. So, what time did you wake up? What? Oh, oh, I woke up a little while ago. Luis said quickly, looking into the kettle, unsure as to why it was empty. At what time exactly? Ryan asked, sitting down. His younger friend seemed to sigh in relief as he did this, but he didn't make any other response to the question. How many have you had? Ryan asked, trying a different approach. Hmm? Luis looked up, confused. Ryan pointed towards the empty coffee cups. Oh, coffee? Just, um... How many did I have again? Two? Wait, three? Yeah, three. Or... Or maybe four? He laughed. Ryan smiled nervously. Luis filled the kettle and put it on to boil, watching it intently. Do you... Wanna sit down while we wait? No, not really. They waited in silence. The bubbling over the kettle was the only noise in the room. Eventually, it started whistling and it was ready. Luis downed his current cup, which had never left his hand, and began to make two more. Ryan watched closely. His friend's hands were shaking and his breath was quick and shallow. Coffee no overdose. Luis looked up from adding the coffee and his eyes narrowed as he saw his older friend. Ryan casually watched the rest of the room, pretending that he was simply looking around. A few seconds later, Luis approached Ryan with the two cups of coffee in his hands. The older man smiled as sincerely as possible and held out his hand to take one. Luis flinched backwards. They both looked at each other, staying in the exact same position. Ryan waited patiently and calmly. Louis swallowed hard and blinked softly before finally handing him a cup. Thanks, mate. Ryan said quietly, looking at the black liquid in the mug. There was no milk or sugar, just pure coffee. He took a sip and crunched at how bitter it was and placed it on the coffee table. Louis looked upset. It's just really hot at the moment, his older friend explained. I'll have it in a second. This is beyond wrong right now. Ryan dug apprehensively. His younger friend was staring at him with that same fear behind his eyes. He had a long drink from his coffee, struggling to hold it in his shaking hands. Ryan counted to ten in his head, letting his talk catch up with the situation. He slowly shuffled closer to the shaken man on the outer sofa. Luis went to move away, but Ryan gently held onto one of his legs. Luis, please answer me honestly, okay? Luis nodded hastily, not taking his eyes off of Ryan's hand. Did you sleep last night? At all? Ryan remembered Luis snoring. He had been sleeping, but for how long? I... I... Luis stuttered. I woke up at midnight. Did you try and get back to bed? I couldn't. He went to take another drink. Ryan held onto his wrist and Luis practically yelped in fear. He looked at Ryan with an extremely pleading look. It was as if a cornered animal was looking into the eyes of its approaching predator. I didn't mean it. His younger friend whispered desperately. Ryan was beyond confused now. He was scared. He took his hand off of Luis's knee and gently tried to take the cup from his younger friend's hand. Luis gripped onto it. Luis? He said nothing. Luis, you've had enough. I can't fall asleep, I have to stay awake. Luis muttered. He let go of the coffee. Why can't you sleep? Ryan asked, placing the cup as far away from Luis as possible and letting go of his wrist. The shaken man quickly pulled away as soon as he was free. 
Liz shook his head and Ryan could have sworn that the tears were forming in his eyes. What is happening? Neither of them understood, but neither one of them ever would. Ryan placed a reassuring hand on Louis's shoulder and gave a small smile. Although the younger man was extremely uncomfortable with this entire situation, he tried to force a smile for his older friend. Please let me go. And just like it had done so many times last night, Louis's man started to drop and his thoughts began to fade into nothingness. The fear it brought them, it only made it worse. Ryan could only watch as his friend's eyes glazed over, sheer panic rising inside of him. Luis? He asked, shaking his friend a little. Luis, come on man, you're freaking me out! The younger man seemed to look through Ryan, his eyes void of emotion. And Luis smiled. I'm not crazy. He said calmly. Too calm. I never was all Ryan could manage. Louis slowly raised his hand and grasped Ryan's hand, pulling it off of his shoulder. You tell no one. Ryan stared, dumbfounded. He gave the slightest of nods and his friend let go. Louis blinked slowly a couple of times, confusion suddenly washing over his face. Ryan gave him an expecting look. Um, the younger man started. I need a shower. It was at this moment best choose to come out of his room. He had clearly just woken up and was rubbing the sleep from one of his eyes. Morning, guys, he yawned. Louis stood up and suddenly rushed up the stairs, barely acknowledging the pink-haired man. Bess watched, unsure of what had happened before he had come out. He looked at Ryan for guidance, but Ryan didn't look back. Hello everybody, thank you so much for watching. Uh, as you can see, I am behind my microphone at the moment, so you can't really see my face, but yeah, I figure out how to use my microphone. So hopefully this audiobook, like these ch new chapters will sound better a bit and I will try to spend more time on the editing and hopefully you will enjoy it more just as I will. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and check out uh, other of my stuff. It will mean a lot to me. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and have a nice day. Bye!